Okay, so question six. We have this differential equation, and they want us to solve it by variation of parameters, then by Laplace transform. Okay. So how are we going to do this? Well, the variation of parameters means, first of all, you solve the, the homogeneous version of the equation, so the, the version of this equals zero, and you solve that by finding the auxiliary polynomial, and that gives you this, the... the because you did, we'll give you two independent solutions, and we put it in that whole matrix and, and, and solve it. And so whole matrix system, and then solve it. Uh, it's this method we apply. Okay. Um, um, we should bear in mind we have, the initial, we have initial conditions y0 equals 1 and y dash 0 equals 0, which will get rid of any constants. Okay, so the equation is y dash dash plus 3y dash minus 4y equals 2e to the t. So first of all, we want the homogeneous version. Well, in fact, let's not even bother writing that down. Let's just write down the, the auxiliary polynomial we'll have. So 6.1. So the auxiliary polynomial will be lambda squared plus 3 lambda minus 4 equals... Oh, okay, that's it. We equals it. Okay, then we want to factorize that. So we can factorize as lambda plus 4 lambda minus 1. Okay, so that means that two independent solutions are y1 equals um, e to the minus 4t and y2 equals e to the t. All right, uh, then that we know that y, the, the general solution, will be given by u1, y1, plus u2, y2. Okay. Where u1 and u2, they come from this equation. So we have this matrix where we have y1, then y1 dash, derivative of y1. Then we have, here we have y2, and the derivative of y2. And we have u1 dash, u2 dash equals, and then we have 0. Then we have the thing that's on the right of the equation, uh, which was 2e to the t. And then we actually have to divide it by the, 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 fact, the coefficient of the second derivative, y dash dash, but there was no coefficient, it was just one, so it doesn't stay the same. So now we've got to solve this for u1 dash, u2 dash. So I think a good first step actually would be to factorize out et t. Would that help? Yes, I think that will help. If we factorize out e to the, e to the t, factorize out e to the minus 4t, I'm, I'm thinking. Let me factorize out. I talk about e to the minus 4t, then I'll have e to the 6t there. If I talk about e to the t, I'll factorize out e to the t. So I will have e to the minus 5t minus 4, e to the minus 5t, and 1, 1. u1 dash, u2 dash equals. I can factorize out e to the t here. Oh, yeah, that's why it's good to factorize out e to the t, because it's there. So we can actually ignore the e to the t's now in solving this thing, because they would cancel out. Um, so I think we can probably solve this by inspection. So I want u1 dash, u2 dash. Uh, so we want the top things to cancel out. The top row must uh, we multiply that must cancel out. So that means that the u2 dash is going to have to have a factor of e to the 5t more than the top, which has to have a different sign so that they cancel. Then at the bottom we have the second row is going to, has to give us has to give us two. So that means that the u two actually the u two dash actually it must be a it can't have any e to the e to the five t's in it. So to keep the to keep this. Uh, with the relationship of factors, we have to let's have an extra e to the five minus five t. Let's have an no, let's have an e to the five t here to cancel 
about that, and then a one here, but minus one. Okay, so the top row now, will, yeah, things cancel out. In the second row, you get you get minus four, and then the e to the five minus five to, e to the five to cancel, and then you get minus one. Okay, so that's minus five. That's not right. We want two, so we're just gonna put it minus two over five in front of the whole thing. So this this should be it should work. So the, to check it again, the top row, e to the minus, you get 1, minus 1, 0. And the second row, you get minus 4, minus 1, which is minus 5, e times by minus 2 over 5, you get 2. Yes, OK. So this is u1 dash, u2 dash. So now this allows us to work out u1 by integrating, u1 and u2 by integrating. So u1 will be... So we integrate, we can have what, e to the 5t, but then we need a, to cancel out this 5, so we need an extra factor of 5, so you're going to have 2 over 5 squared. Okay. And then there'll also be a constant factor. Um, then... You know what? Never mind. I'm not going to bother with the constant yet because we add the constant on so many things later. Uh, oh no, I am. I'm going to put the constant here. So the constant, let's call it, let's call it c1, and then u2 is just two over five. So the integral of that is two over five t plus its constant. Okay, so that means that y comes to now we do we do u one times y one so y one was e to the minus forty so when you do that multiplication you get what you get minus two over five squared e to the t plus c one e to the minus forty and then u two times this by y two which is e to the t you get plus two over five t e to the t plus c2 e to the t. Now, we can collect the e to the t terms. We can replace um, this first e to the t term. That can be absorbed into the constant. So this thing becomes 2 over 5 t e to the t plus c1 e to the minus 40 plus c2 e to the t. I mean, technically I should rename the c2, but that's not really necessary. It's any constant. So it can, it can, it can absorb the... It needs to be thought of a c2 minus 2 over 5 squared. That's fine. Okay. We could check this, right? Oh, no. We need to check initial conditions, of course. So the initial conditions were... They'll get rid of the constants for us. The initial conditions were y naught equals one and y dash naught equals zero. So, so y naught equals one. So we could try and make it like this. So one equals y naught, and y of naught is what is. So that first term goes away, and you just get c one e to the. Well, you get c one. C1 plus C2, okay. Then Y dash naught. So we need to work out Y dash now. So we need to take the derivative of this uh, Y. So you have what? You have 2 over 5 e to the T plus 2 over 5 T e to the T minus 4 C1 e to the minus 4 T plus C2 e to the T. And now... So what? So now we said that y dash naught equals zero. So zero equals y dash naught. And what is y dash naught? It's two over five, and that's one goes to zero, and then you have minus four c one plus c two. So we have these two uh, linear equations, so we can solve them. Um, so let's see how we're gonna do this. We could say start off by saying well, this thing implies that what that c two equals 1 minus c1, OK? 
Okay, so those things together imply that 0 equals 2 over 5 minus 4c1 plus 1 minus c1. So that gives us gives us what gives us 0 equals 2 over 5 plus 1, that's 7 over 5, minus 5c1. So that's what well, that's c 5c1 equals 7 over 5. So it's c1. c1 equals 7 over 5 squared. Okay, and then that means that so c2 was 1 minus c1. So c2 is 1 minus so it's it's like 25 minus 7 over 25 5 squared. It's 1 minus c1 and that's 18 over 5 squared. Okay, so that's the c1 and the c2 are. There's no need to write the whole thing with those in there. Okay, so now we need to. That's six point one, right? Now they want to do the same. Do the same thing. I'm not going to check it because the next question is solve it by Laplace transforms. So I will just the check will be if the Laplace transform solution is the same as this solution. So Laplace transforms. So. We Laplace transform both sides, right? So the left is is that, and the right is Laplace transform of of that. Okay. Now Laplace transforms are linear, so the left hand side. Sorry, the left hand side becomes ah, more space. The left hand side becomes from y dash dash plus three times the Laplace transform of y dash minus four times the Laplace transform of y. I'm gonna leave the right hand side for now. This oh no I'm not you can two Laplace transform of e to the t. Okay. So now I've got to look up on the table these things. So we've got these derivatives to transform and we've got an e to the t to transform. So the table. Uh, so e to the t, that'll just be this one. So e to the t, that's like a equals 1, so it'll transform to 1 over s minus 1. The derivatives, we have a second derivative, and a, so we have a y dash dash, so that'll transform to n is equal to, so s squared, and then big Y, it means that the part transform of little y, minus and s, 2 minus 1 is is um, s to the 1 minus no, 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 no. s to the 0, and that's the last term, because it's the, it's this last, it's this last uh, term where, the, ooh, where there's no s's. Um, so, but the thing is that, okay, that's fine, leave that for now, y dash will be s y minus why not? Okay. So we can do this now. So y dash dash, that was s squared y minus s y, was it s? Yeah, s y naught minus y dash naught. Then we had plus three times, and then an s y. Um, minus y naught, then we have times four times, and then the Laplace transform of, of y is just big Y, and then e to the t, that was what was s minus one, right? So we have two of s minus one, because there's that two in front of it, just check that, yes, s minus one. Okay. Now, the initial conditions don't help here, because what y dash naught, we had y of naught equals one, and y dash naught equals zero, so this means we have, oh, sorry, we have s squared y, so y of naught was 1, so that's s, y dash naught is 0, so that goes away, plus 3s y, 
Oh, I've got a three here. There should be a three there. It doesn't matter though because y or it doesn't matter because y of naught is one, so they get minus three. Um, minus four y equals two over s minus one. Okay, now we could now what we do is we on the one side we're gonna have the y's and we're gonna factorize the y out, the big y's. So s squared plus 3s minus 4. Ooh, that's the exact polynomial, right? Yeah, cool. Um, and that was y. On the other side, we will have 2s minus 1 plus s plus 3. Yes. Okay. So, we need to deal with that right-hand side. And then, what's this left-hand side, actually? Okay, so, left-hand side factorizes the same as the polynomial S. S plus 4 times S minus 1. Okay. And now this equals... So, let's put these over a common factor to deal to... I think, what should we do? Put them in a common factor. Uh, let me think. Oh, I forgot the y, meanwhile. So we're going to want to then divide both sides by this s minus 1. Ah, oh, no, I think, no, no need for common factors or anything. We just... Just, just uh, carry on with what's going on. So 2 of s minus 1 plus, I'm just going to now write this as, oh, no, s, I'll write as s plus 3. Okay. Now we divide both sides by s plus 4, s minus 1. So we get 2 over s minus 1 squared s plus 4 plus s over s minus 1. S plus, okay, the problem is we're going to have, now we're going to have three factors, each of which needs to be dealt with by partial fractions. That is a tremendous hassle. So we should definitely convert this into one factor. So put the S plus 3 of the same factor as S minus 1. Is that going to be okay? The problem is that when we do that, then we'll have a quadratic at the top. We would have to when we have to do long division and you just get this thing back again. I don't want to do two different partial fractions. Hmm. So you're going to have two over... Let's think, what do you do? So you have... When you have this uh, situation of, so we could put them all over both a common factor, but then the common f the, the thing will have, like an, it'll have a, a quadratic on the top, and the bottom will be s minus 1. Then we divide through by s plus 4, s minus 1. So we have a quadratic over s plus 4, s minus 1. Let's actually just do it and see what happens. Maybe something nice will cancel. Okay, so we bring them over a common factor. We'd have 2 plus. S top would be 2 plus s plus 3 times s minus 1. s plus 3 times s minus 1. That'll come to... Well, it'll come to s squared plus 3s minus s minus 3. So that 3s minus s is 2s. So you have 2 plus all that. So you have end up with s squared plus 2s minus 1 then that factorizes as s, oh dear, s, is that going to factorize at all? You need s minus 1, s plus 1, but now we have this 2s here. Oh dear. This, uh, this is a polynomial complex root, isn't it? That's, that can't be right. That's going to be horrible.